A couple of seconds warning and you can see they're about a meter away from that gantry at the moment. And what you don't want to do is to get stuck against it as that gantry comes it's down. Weird distribution boats. You've got four, for that third set of boys from the left, you've got four between two boys. Then further across, you've got a, one boat all on its own. Gantry drops and they're away clean. The women's K2 Junior is underway as they head off downriver with the current coming from behind them. And a good, solid start. That's Reese and Kmetio from Hungary. Hungarians always in the women's K2 are a force to be reckoned with. Meanwhile, on the left side of your picture, third one up from the bottom, that's the Spanish. They're leading there. Croatians in shot. And the Hungarians in the yellow boat just to their right. The one thing we did learn from yesterday is that the teams through their training There's have... Your world champions right there on the left of the group and the Argentinians, Duthat and Pedrotti delivering against your expectations that they were going to be hot and they certainly came out of the blocks like scalded cats so nicely organized group no real danger of contact just yet and it's the Spaniards leading big safely well organized group. Great Britain tucked tidily in the back told you they were good Hungary to the right and do that and Pedrotti in the green boat just to the left of the leader. So one long lap with no portage at the start so of this, Spain this event. with Yaristi and Figueredo. It was Figueredo and Fernandez at the Europeans and it, this looks to be an upgrade for sure. The Hungarian boat of Kadla and Zatio looking strong as well right up at the front. And as they come across, it's going to get a little bit tight. Or they're not actually coming across. I mean, that's... You wouldn't see a group that shape in the, <laughs> the men's race, I don't think. It's just that they've come all the way up on the right-hand side there, the yellow boat, you see. And normally, you would expect them just to come slowly across and join the Spaniards. And the Hungarians have powered their way into the front, so they'll expect the uh, formation to reshape itself around them no it looks like italians to the hungarians right that's going to be uh, burnett and crevero then closest to us is denmark with anderson and hinger in the sort of yellowy boat with the white tips singer and smith just behind them tucked, tucked in, in the, the back, back of the group looking very comfortable and composed Good opportunity now to introduce you to Bridget Hartley, who joins us here in commentary. Bridget, who we've got to sort of confess up front because she's probably as nervous as she was when she's racing as a as an athlete lining up in London in 2012. Because you're wearing a different hat today, Bridget. You're Bridget the coach. <laughs> yes, it is a little bit different, I must say. Um, I feel like I was super nervous, but I had to show a poker face because the girls that I coached were more nervous. <laughs> and even the other South African crews were asking me for tips before the start. But it's really a pleasure to be able to give a little bit of guidance when you see the nervous faces. So just unpack it. T Hannah and Taylor, your boat. Yeah, so they're a really young crew. They're only under 16. Um, so we convinced them to come and race to get some experience so that they can come do it again before they leave the under 18 category. Um, so it'll be a tough race for them um, but it's really nice that there's another strong South African crew on the water as well for them to look up to. This is their first time on the big stage and I was warbling on about it earlier. The nerves I guess are your biggest enemy on your first big international outing. 100% I think for all of these girls um, it's tough being a junior um, at a big event like this uh, seeing all the other competitors. For the Europeans at least they get to race each other they get to be almost on a half a world stage um, showing off what they can do um, and for South Africa we often are a little bit left behind especially in the junior category the senior men always race really strong against each other but the junior categories it's tough to be at this level at home one of the things that Georgia made such a good point about training down in Cape Town is that they benefit from training with senior men because they have no alternative but then you learn to be pretty streetwise, particularly in bunch racing. Yes, exactly. So I think that's been a really good draw card for them. Um, I've got my junior girls racing with some of the Marathon College boys or training with them as well. So we've put we've thrown them in the mix. Um, but uh, definitely getting experience on the world stage is, counts the most. 
Thanks, Bridge. We're going to tap into your expertise on and off throughout this, but uh, lining up is the second half of it, Ivan. Let's take us through that under-23 men's C1 race, which is just about to get underway. So we've got Derevensky from Ukraine, fourth at the Europeans, and his teammate Melnik just under him. Then some Andre from Hungary. Chisholm, who we saw racing the juniors yesterday, who did a really good job, even though he had that flappy foot that we kept commenting on. <laughs> I ticked his coach with that yesterday. Aries from Spain, Pincas, who we also saw yesterday from Czech Republic, Barbal, and then Pet shower. Pinheiro from Spain, Vilga from Poland, Jenkin from Australia, Plusik we've already seen from Hungary, Sartori, uh, Quadricolo we saw yesterday as well, Rotundu and Ozumi. Ones to watch really, uh, Vilga is the man, but he struggled so badly getting around the turns yesterday. Frankly, I mean, it's rude to say it probably, but he looks a bit of an amateur going around the turns compared to the others. For and a European and world silver medalist, European champion and world silver medalist, that seems odd. Away they go. And that is, yeah, just look back a few years. The size of that field in an under-23 men's race is phenomenal compared to what it used to be. And the quality is high. Yeah, and good to see countries like um, Japan represented on the start line with uh, Rui Oizumi, who we saw race yesterday as well, but okay. grabbing every opportunity to race at this level. Barbal, we saw yesterday as well, Pet Shower in the middle, 301, closest to us is Derevensky, fourth at the Europeans. You won't see them come together quite as quickly. Oh, on the right side there, a little bit of contact as... Is that Derevensky coming across? There's the Romanian, Rotundu, in the middle there. We've got a swimmer already. Could be the Japanese. You can't see that on screen, but it's just outside our window. Well, Dave's window. Let's let's be clear about that. I don't get a window at my end of the cabin. Dave has and he's furious. Dave has he is absolutely apoplectic with rage. It's rare Oizumi who's fallen in. He must have been, I can only assume it is contact. He was super competent in the boat and comfortable and competitive. So the frustration of being able to get onto the water for a big moment like this, your under-23 C1 showdown, and he's out. So he's getting a bit of help from the local marshals. He'll be hauled to the side, but I'm afraid his opportunity of getting onto a wave and being competitive, uh, that has just gone with uh, the swim. There he is. Absolute bundle of frustration, Rio Oizumi. But back at the front, you've got three together. We've got Derevensky, Ares, and Barbal there all together at the front. They seem very well organized. I don't think they're as far clear as that. I think there's another group to the, off to the side of them somewhere. You can see two more bows just behind them. There is Derevensky. The bow of Ares with ESP written on it. And there's the other groups. A little bit further back, these guys, the Italian, Ukrainian. Interesting part about what we've got on the water at the moment with the uh, women's K2, which is going to be a hot race. They're racing five full laps. They will move at a different speed to these sea boats. And there will probably be a stage where there's going to be an overlap and an expectation that there will be some sort of courtesy observed to the quicker boats coming through on the course. Yeah, I think everyone's pretty familiar with that. I think the, the problem here, and, and Bridget might be able to help us because she was on the water yesterday, we've got these steep concrete banks and there's a lot of to-in and fro-in within this area. It's probably about 500 metres long of, of concrete banks. The waves must bounce around and stay there, do they, Bridget? Yes, 100%. So you actually do feel like the, there's a lot more waves between the concrete area and as soon as you get to the bottom, it almost feels like a completely different piece of water and you feel you can paddle a lot easier and get a little bit more into your own. So it, it is a little bit more tricky after the portage and getting around. Um, but I think the paddlers have warmed up and trained in the areas with enough waves now yeah. to, to be aware that when they do get to the concrete area that it is going to be a bit of a challenge. We've got medical medical assistance going on there from the rescue boat. with a That was almost a classic white cross of a plaster on his shoulder. That's an emergency right there. And free spray. You, That's the magic spray. You, once you're using free spray, you know. So we've got Moldova there, we've got Spain, we've got Ukraine. It's all coming together. We've got a couple of Hungarians. They're in the white shirt, one with a backwards cap on, so you know he's fast. In fact, they might both have a backwards cap on. So we've got double speed in that front group. 
And now it's kind of a formation. It's like the red arrows there. Yeah, they're struggling to find the <laughs> formation, I think. But they eventually they will. Back to the K2 women. And we've got the Hungarians, Kadla and Zatko leading. Singer and Smith, they've made their way back to the, well, back to the front. I don't, can you say that? And then Great Britain there. They're tidy in there with Hutchinson the ball, then Kolobova and Abassia from Italy in the blue boat at the back of that group. No, they almost have a very nice group of five going there, the one crew trying to get on. Um, however, it's really good that they are hugging the bank. They did that um, in all the other races. Is it shallow at all on so, that edge? So, so it's actually not. In training, we went right up there, and it doesn't feel shallow at all. You just yep. kind of feel like you shouldn't be so close to the bank. But paddling on the inside, on the bank, on a wave is actually so much better. You really can relax a lot more. So the South African girls are in a good spot. I think they're used to having a little bit of weed and waves. Just point out not as good as the Great Britain crew who are in the V behind them. They're, they're the clever crew for now yeah, for yeah. this lap but the Hungarian girls are looking smooth. All those crews they really are paddling nicely. Nice combinations I think and they've, they've found a nice group um, within themselves now so that group will probably stay like that for the next lap. I think so. No portage of course on the first lap so there's nothing to disrupt it. But you can see the waves from the C1s going through there as well. It's quite choppy all of a sudden. Second chase group is the second Hungarian Reese Kometko, Josti and Figueredo from Spain, Anderson and Hinger from Denmark. They're all kind of in there somewhere. And it's quite a close group of five, followed by a group of four. It's good race in here, but it's Kadla and Zatko from Hungary. They won at the Europeans, and that's always a reasonable indication of form. But Reese and Kometko, they're not up there just at the moment. They're in sixth place. They're leading, kind of leading the second group. And Reese had a torrid day yesterday, Dave, as well. So, you know, she didn't really make the front group, but she did join in later. It is still early days, so after the turn, anything can happen. And, and then you have the current behind you, and then sometimes some of the crews will actually put in a little bit of an interval to catch back if they can, because going up now on the side, it's a little bit trickier. But going back down after the turn, sometimes the bunches will change again. And presumably going downstream, you can go wide and ride the waves down the side, which you haven't got that option coming upstream without going into the middle of the river. Yeah, yeah, so you'd rather want to just sit tight on the way up, yeah. hug the bank as best you can, and then see if you can make a move on the way down. Cool. So Nielsen, Corneliusen from Denmark. I might just refer to them as the Danes because I'm really struggling with that. It does look like the second group have made a little bit of a move and they're sitting on the tails. So we might actually find the group getting bigger again after this turn at the top. I think that's the, the second Hungarian crew, probably of recent Kometko, leading that charge back to this group. We saw her come back twice, three times maybe, yesterday in the K1 race. And then she's for sure got determination and she'll do the same again today. C1s going around the bottom turn. We're looking at Barbel, Plusik, Ares, Derevensky and Vilga. Yeah, so this, this turn might create a little bit of a break, especially if they can see that happening. But if they go up along the side, they'll be able to form a group of five again. So leading out there, Plusik from Hungary, then the Moldovan, Barbel, Derevensky in the yellow cap, and then the Spaniard, Pinheiro. And surprisingly, Vilga didn't get round that turn very well. He's got a whole day of that. He had a whole day of it yesterday. You've got to say, the Moldovan there, Barbel, is making a big mistake going up the middle of the river. 100%. 100%. The Hungarian's going to pull away. As soon as you take that turn, you have to just go right. Or you almost can skip that last red point. Yeah. You can skip it completely. You don't have to go close to it and go right towards the, the reeds. Otherwise, you are definitely working a little bit yeah. too hard. And, and he is too far out in the red boat there, for sure. But then I guess in the C1s, you have to trade that off against paddling in the rougher water where they haven't got the steering. I think it is tricky depending on which side that they're turning and which side that they're putting their paddle in. Yeah, we have the K2 girls coming past us on the left and they've definitely formed a bigger group. Such an amateur 
Bridget, you can't comment on things that the public can't see. Sorry, so, <laughs> I got so excited. This is this is this is uh, entry level commentary there, Bridget. No one can see that. We're watching the canoes. I was hoping that the cameraman would hear me and he'd swap over. <laughs> yeah, keep hoping. So, <laughs> Plusik, Pinheiro, Barbal, Derevensky, Vilga at the back there. No, it's not Vilga at the back. It's Vilga's left-handed, isn't he? Well, he was yesterday, at least. Maybe he's learned from the turns. <laughs> so Vilga, so here we go. Back to the K2 women around the top turn. A group now of seven. So this is also quite a critical turn, especially with the double, um, getting around that pinnacle boy. Um, but it does look like the girls have actually done a really good job of it. And now as soon as, as, soon as they come around, if they put in a big interval, then we'll see the, the group form. But it is easy for the boats to Seven's gone down to five, really, on that turn. We've lost two off the back. That's going to be uh, the Italians and the Danes, I think, off the back with... Kolobova and Abassia, Anderson and Hinger. 297, that's the other Danes. Nielsen and her other partner. <laughs> they look Great Britain tidy on the side. You can see the waves that they've created going upstream. They're having to bob back over those going down. Hungarians in the V and on the right hand side. So we've got two Hungarian K2s. Yeah, there isn't a women's field that's ever existed that doesn't fear two Hungarian K2s in the same group, is there? 100%. They, just, <laughs> it's just kind of a foreboding, overshadowing of whatever's going on. It is incredible, though, to see the depth, especially at the junior level. Uh, th that's why we, n we always get so many feeding through into the seniors. South Africans on the right-hand side there, Bridget making hard work of it. Are they hoping to get in on the Hungarians or, I mean, wh what's their plan there? I'm, I'm confused a bit by that. <laughs> so I feel like they were hoping that another crew would take up the pool, so I think that they... And they might have that now. Yeah, they took a gamble yep. um, and it was actually a good gamble good because gamble. they could have ended up sitting on the outside wave and... But with the, with the current behind you, you don't necessarily need to sit on the tail wave, only going upstream. So going down I think it's in your favor so so now it's Great Britain with the plans to do they got to do something yeah there and, are, and, and hopefully and here we go they're they going to move up may, maybe a little bit too soon but I think going downstream it's really not necessary um, because you actually do have help from the current um, but they have forced the Danish crew now to take up the pull again the and Italians, then the South Africans back to Italians rejoining so it's kind of a five's an awkward number for a group it, there's always someone who's got a wash that they don't really like and need to uh, thinking they want to change it the Italians rejoined Oh, more swimmers. Oh, dear. That's a little bit Ooh. unfortunate to be swimming. Oh, there are Italians also. So we got Italians just rejoining the front group. That's Kolobova and Abbasia. And the second Italians, that's Burnett and Crevero, are in the water there, 292. As we go back to the C1s. And just three leaders, Pinheiro, Plusik and Vilga. Plusik leads at the moment from Pinheiro from well is it maybe is there a brother Vilga maybe it's a different Vilga okay so I so I've completely made an absolute fool of myself on the com and you didn't tell you knew that and you didn't tell me Dave thank you just say throw me under the bus you have you heard that they're only having one of us next year and you're you're just going to let me roll on with bad information. So we've got a right-handed Vilga, which now makes a lot more sense to me. They've definitely made it a little bit easier for themselves now, having a breakaway of three, I think, in the C1 group, especially coming around the top turn. And with a left-hander and a right-hander on opposite sides of the leader there as well. Well, so everyone's on their favoured wash hanging side. There's quite a lot of relaxation available in that group as it stands. 
The others just behind Derevensky leads the charge in the blue shirt, but really that gap looks to be opening. Behind Derevensky is Barbel and Ares, the uh, Spaniard. Are these three away? Quite a lot of dodgy boat colour choices in the C1, don't you think? I mean, that first boat, that's... And then you've got the Spaniard's boat. Only the pole really going traditional with white boat, red line. I think the boat builders now allow them to have a little bit more of an expression on the artwork. So <laughs> that's what we're seeing coming through. So Vilga takes up the lead, and again, the other two organise themselves on their favourite wash hanging side with their paddle nearest to the leader. So the right handers like wash hanging on the left side, and the left handers like wash hanging on the right side. <laughs> Is it possible to be competitive without a cap? Normally on the backwards. Well, you got to say Pinheiro's doing well in that group without a cap. But the backwards cap, well, look, yeah, no, yeah. I think you're right, Dave. I mean, two out of three, you've got to look at probabilities. And cap wearing does seem to. Probability alone will get you into that front group. So no portage. This is their first lap, obviously. But we also don't know what hairstyles they have underneath there. So if they have some wild hair, maybe that's what they're holding down. <laughs> and back to the junior women's K2, a solid group of six still. Hungary, Hungary, Great Britain, no, Denmark, sorry, then Hungary, Great Britain, Hungary in the V-Wash, South Africans on the left of the group, Italians in the blue boat, picking up the pieces at the back. So Nielsen and co leading uh, out for now as they go down to the bottom turn. It does look like they're looking across to the left to almost give someone a hint to take up the pool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they... And there, there's a lot of that, Bridget. For, for people who haven't been there, there's kind of... There aren't rules, but you know when you're being given the nod and you know if you ignore that nod, it doesn't really make you very popular. No, 100%. Often people do... Um, paddle down a full length before th they do change and only after the pool does the, the group change but when there's a big group like this and somebody's feeling a little bit uncomfortable on the outside that's when we still saw the intervals earlier and then the, the group changes halfway down or halfway up yeah. <laughs> so this looks very well organized Denmark Hungary to their right in the yellow boat Great Britain in the red boat Hungary tucked in the V behind and that's Kadler and no, it's Reese and Kometko in the back. We saw Reese yesterday struggling a little bit. South African world champions to the left. Charlie Smith in shot there. He's had a torrid time with a shoulder injury, but we would expect to see him back up the sharp end of these races at some point. It looks like there's a little bit of an interval at the bottom here because those Italian girls are looking comfortable on the, the back wash and now they've been thrown a little bit off. It's the other Great Britain boat there. Payne. Both raced K1 yesterday. The group strings out around the corner. There'll always be plenty of room on the inside on a downstream turn. The water will wash them down. You're, you're right about the Italians struggling there, though. They're just losing contact slightly. Great Britain hopefully will just wait for the South Africans to go up the side. And it's four at the moment. South Africans doing a good job for us there. We don't mind that. <laughs> oh, and Dane it's paddles down from Denmark. Yeah, so they've been pulling all the way down, so that would be expected that they don't want to pull. This will be interesting because again. South Africans will want to get to the yellow boat of Hungary, but with it upstream, there's no right hand wash on those Hungarians now. Yeah, so now they are in a little bit of a tricky situation yeah. that they are being forced to drop back, but it doesn't have to be a diamond going up. It can be exactly how they've just reached. Twos and twos. Yeah. yeah. See ones through the town at the top here. Still the same Pinheiro leads from Vilga from Plusik. And you got the check there, along with Sartori of Italy, Sartori and Pincas 
Not sure where on the course they are. So there's your leaders. Back, they're going back down again. So they're halfway going um, back down. They've already turned at the top between the concrete, and now they're halfway back down to the turning buoy. So three ahead, Pinheiro, Vilga and Plusik. Behind them, Aries and Derevensky. Barbel from Moldova, Quattrocolo from Italy, Samandre from Hungary, Pinkas, who we just saw with Sartori behind them. And it's well spread out. But the front three all glued together, at least for now, until the portages begin. The C1 guys are all generally pretty good. They haven't got rudders to worry about on the portage, and they all seem to run reasonably well. Mm, that they really do, and it's also slightly easier to hold their boat in their hand, yep. I think, because of the lip on the side. Um, and, and they don't have any water rushing forwards or backwards. Yep. Yeah, you see them generally, they'll turn the boat over immediately, they get out, everything comes out, and uh, it is a little bit of an easier life. But I wouldn't trade that easier life on the portage for a, a lifetime of kneeling up, would you? <laughs> I must say, I did try C1, well actually C2 at a stage, and it was a little bit more fun paddling with someone who knew what they were doing. But by myself, I think I'd just go around in a circle. Wouldn't get that J stroke right. So it's quite an art. I did enjoy training with them a lot, though, because the C1 men are it's the, the same, same speed as the K1 women, so they are great training partners. So these three heading down to the bottom turn for the second time, and this time on their upstream leg, they will have to do a portage. We've seen the portage be quite significant on a lot of the races so far. There's a couple of points to that. It's your management coming into the portage. The skill getting in and out of the boat and of course the running section as well. But everything looking pretty leisurely up the front of the men's C1. I'm gonna leap in here and throw a question to Bridget. The gold medal that Georgia and Holly won last year was Maybe not everybody saw it coming. It was such a contrast of styles in that particular race. And we, we and our interpretation, just said they did it out of guts alone. It was just, they slugged it out and they managed to grind it out, as Holly said. What's the impact that that gold has had on the younger women in South Africa? And I ask you that because you're coaching a bunch of them who must have watched that race and been impacted by it. Yes, 100%. It definitely has impacted a lot of the junior girls. It gives them that belief. Um, and I think the nice thing is is that they actually they did train for that. They didn't know that if they got to the last portage and they just ran it easy that they could pull away. They were told that if you get to the last portage and you're feeling comfortable, you're feeling strong, and you have a good last portage, you will get ahead and then go for broke. What's it been like coaching and being an athlete? And I mean, I'm sure you haven't put to bed any of your desires to be competitive as a paddler as as well as a coach plus you're the, you've got the responsibilities of the athletes commission for the ICF I mean you've got a heap on your plate yeah I might be wearing a few different caps at the moment um, but I guess I'm still young and I can do a few things so um, I, I think that um, it's it's great to see the youngsters paddling like they are um, and I'm enjoying coaching them and seeing them transition I, I don't think I'm really training as hard as I was before are you being pushed by your youngsters I definitely am <laughs> I thought I was gonna stop for a while and then I realized that if I stop, then no one's challenging them. We have a, we have a really good um, group now to look out for. I think the fact that the girls have broken our way into a group of four now really makes it comfortable um, paddling up the way that they are. Um, so we, we have the Hungarians of Kudla and Zitko leading. Um, they're paddling super well with the Danish next to them. Um, and that's the Danish crew of uh, Nielsen and Cornelissen. Uh, and then the South Africans right behind behind on the Hungarian's tail, so that's um, Singh and Smith. And then the fourth crew that's there is the, the British, which is Hutchinson and Ball. And they really are looking comfortable. I think to sit in a formation like that going upstream is absolutely perfect. They they were almost forced into doing that, but as soon as they get up to the portage now, it'll be interesting to see who goes left and who goes right, because having doubles like that, they all can't go to the one side. It'll be become a bit tricky. So the Hungarians are in favor to take out where they want to, and the two boats behind of the Hungarians and the Great Britain crew 
crew would have to choose either left or right. So you might have three on the right, one on the left, but one of them has to go left. So it's lap two for the junior women as they size up the first of the portages. Bridge, while we've got you, the expectation from your charges, I mean, what have you told them to go into this race looking forward to? So I said to them to aim for a top 10. I said it's going to be hard. It'll be a tough start. The race is not over until it's over, until you cross the line. You don't know what will happen in between. Someone can break a rudder. Somebody can fall in. So it doesn't matter where you are. But as you go throughout the race, if you get left behind a little bit, aim for that top 10. And now that's the goal that they've had from the start of today. I was fascinated to read last night that Melina Anderson had her race paddle broken by her boyfriend on the morning of the race yesterday and she went on to win and not just win win yeah so yeah we have the take out of the girls we you go. can Portage. see one crew is going to the left um so i thought three might go to the right but now the south africans have left lot have a slow for south africa yeah so they're gonna have to run hard but they can um having three on the right is really tough um but i think it's it's not the end of the world they can definitely regroup it just depends on who puts in where now so that's a little bit of a tricky that looks like those girls' pumps aren't working. so They've, they've got work. water in the nose of that boat. Yeah, so yeah, you have all four crews together. So the South African girls are are trying to go towards the side. So the Hungarian girls have actually pulled away a little bit now. So this is in their favor, um, putting in first and getting away from the jetty. Um, and I don't think that they will let up. They will, they'll put in a charge here for sure. They're not going to wait for anyone. The British girls, it was a good idea for them to go left. But I think that the crews would stay together. Let's hope for them. Traffic congestion in the chasing bunches. They come into the takeout. Yeah, so that was the second Hungarian crew that actually had too much water in their boat. And yeah, the girls are chasing the Hungarians down who are going hard up to the top turn. And in every bunch, there's a split decision, either to head in straight for the turn cans or to hug the right-hand bank for another 50 metres before you make yeah, that turn. Yeah, so it's better to stay up on the right as far as you can and then cut it, and then you almost skip the first turning boy. Um, you can feel the current quite strongly. So, yeah, you'll see the girls will gain a bit, but those Hungarian girls have put the hammer down. They knew that this could be there. This is an early time to break in it a five-lap race. It is an early time to break, but the, the girls are only racing 18 kilometres, um, and I think that they they could make could have made a good decision. So yeah, you have three boats and they're struggling to turn a little bit. The South Africans coming a little bit stuck there um, with that turn. So this is going to be interesting. But we hope that they will regroup. But these Hungarian girls have definitely put the hammer down. I mean, you've seen that so many times in women's racing, especially in the juniors. One portage, often it's two Hungarian crews go away. But it's like in the men's with Mads. If you if you let that gap open in the junior women's with Hungarians, you know you know what's going to happen. And your job should be to cover them. I thought the Great Britain crew did really well there they struggled to get well one of them got that Hutchinson got the boat out but ball in the back didn't quite grab the back no panic no rush but they just lost enough to let those Hungarians go away and you probably think you won't see them again now and you know when you put in after portage like that when you have a bit of clear ground that if you put an interval you can go you can do some damage yeah and now they have the current behind them so they have a good rhythm they're paddling nicely together so they're not going to look behind them no. and with the short courses these days with the turn every you know thousand meters or so you see them so frequently you see the damage you're doing you see whether people are catching you up or not so now we're looking at second third and fourth and it's going to be a race for two medals for three boats there because this is the gold right here with Cadler and Zacchio. 100%, although you only cro you only have the medals once you cross the line, um, but they are Hoodie, Cadler and <laughs> Zacchio. Uh, but I think that the next few portages will be a little bit easier for the three girls behind them, um, because then you'd only have two boats on one side and one on the other. Um, and they, if everybody doesn't make a mistake, They'll probably also work really hard together now to try and catch these girls. But you can almost see by the way that those Hungarians are paddling. It's like they're putting in an interval even though they're on their own. I don't know. Yeah, you say trying to catch them. At some point, you you stop that. I, you, that idea ends, doesn't it? And you start fighting for second, third and fourth rather than for first. And I think probably that gap's already made that decision for them. So you, you stop stop the chase. Great Britain leading it at the moment with Denmark and then the South Africans just off the back in that half V. Yeah, I think now they're sitting in a comfortable position. Um, 
the South Africans in the half feed. There's no reason for them to interval up. Yeah. I think they work quite hard on the portage and trying to get around the turn. And I think also when you turn at the bottom, to be on that half V now is is safer yeah. than being on the outside. Yeah. So Hungary up and running already this morning. They had a slow start to yesterday morning, medals wise. But today it looks like things are turning in their favour already. Great Britain lead Denmark and South Africa. We saw Georgia do, she was really, she did really well yesterday. It looked like she was really enjoying it. Holly didn't have such a great day yesterday in the K1 relative to Georgia, but that doesn't really matter for K2s, does it? If you've got a K2 partner you trust, you're perfectly happy. So, so I, I think that when they raced their national championships, there was a bit of a gap as well. So I, I'm not quite sure what Holly's expectation was in the beginning. I'm sure she might have wanted to be a little bit higher in the field, um, but Georgie really had a really great race. Um, it gave her confidence going in, yeah, but the fact that they both are coming off of being world champions last year and they're great friends and paddle well together yeah. I think that it's almost like yesterday's become a blue already <laughs> yeah that's what, I, that's what I was hoping to get to is just that you don't have to have the two best K1s and a K2 to make the best K2 not at all it's all about making that boat go as fast as you yeah. can together um, and often you have two um, crews that are not like you said the fastest but they make the boat yeah. combine well it is all about making the boat go fast with feel, feeling each other in the boat. I think it, we're a sport that tends to, to train primarily in K1s. We're not unlike rowing, which starts in big boats and works their way, you know, it's only the freaks and weirdos end up in the singles in rowing. But rowing typically is a crew boat sport, where we tend to be an individual sport to get together for crew boats less frequently. Yes, I think that's true. It's probably because there are more races that take place in singles um, than doubles. And it is also at the end of the day to put those crews together. Which is a skill in itself. That's your job as the coach, right? Yes, to try and see who's the best at combining. <laughs> And try different things. I think that's also about being brave as a coach. The C1 guys look like they're super comfortable again in a form. Bad news for the three. Swedish team there, Nielsen and Siftoft. Not sure if they've abandoned the race or they've been abandoned. It wasn't clear on the the, uh, the, the heading there, but either they're, they're, they're sort of. Yeah, we might see them in the. Uh, we hope they haven't been abandoned in Medkovic. Yeah, that's it. It could be. <laughs> See them on the adoption agencies later on in the week. But yeah, tough day for them. There could be boat failure, equipment failure, it could be illness. So the Hungarians it's will be coming up, or the C1 with the Hungarian leading will be coming up for their first portage. I think we're lacking a bit of cowbells and drums for the Hungarian support this year as well. We normally, I mean, we'll get it next year, won't we? In, in Dior next year, we'll yeah. have cowbells and drums. 100% they'll be out in and, full uh, force. <laughs> I feel we're lacking that this year. But Plusik leading into portage number one. Hilga coming across to go right. Yeah, so this looks like they'll all three take out on the right-hand side, but with the C1s, there will probably be more space on the jetty to be able to do that. Oh, it's blue stick coming round, yeah, to the left, two on the left. Oh, they're going on. I think they would also have their favourable side depending on which way they paddle, where yeah. they can get up. But it's interesting, cause, oh, he's sewn his paddle in there. Oh, my word. That was How lucky. lucky was that? That was really lucky. How lucky was that? Yeah. yeah Unbelievable. So we, so we were wondering about how they empty and they actually just tip it Turn over. It over. Yeah. yeah. And then but you've got two right-handers coming in on the on opposite sides there. So you, yeah, you made the point it might be which side they're paddling, but they, they made the choice. But the, uh, the Polish wanted to come in to the second lane yeah. so that yeah, was why he true. made the change um, so that makes sense why he made such a deliberate swap over to the other side i don't think the paddle thing was deliberate though no no that was lucky <laughs> <laughs> he was lucky it was slightly shallow and actually it's all worked in his favor because he's coming he's out coming out very very, in very well positioned yeah, yeah it's actually the spaniard who's, who's coming out yeah. last of the three and they're regrouping really nicely now going up the side before the turn so 
So they're all together still as they go up round. Oh, we've got a message in uh, in our private channels here saying the Swedes are back in the race. They're no longer abandoned. They refuse to be abandoned, apparently, <laughs> which is which is good for them. Because <laughs> we were a little sad here in commentary, felt a bit bad for them that they had been abandoned, and now they're back in the game. So hats off to them. Lap three of five for both races here. So the Hungarian looks like he's trying to, Plusek's trying to pull away a little bit if he can. Um, the Spaniard might have been left behind a little bit on that turn. Yep, definitely a gap showing there between the lead two, Plusik and Vilga. Pinheiro just off the back, but with a big safety buffer. If he was to get left behind permanently, there's a long way back to fourth place. Pinheiro is going a little bit wide, though. He's going to catch, catch the second wave, you can see, and see if that works for yep. him on the way down. So all the C1 spreading out quite a lot around the boy, the turning boy, with only two crews in the front. So yeah, Pinheiro, as Bridget said, he's moved out wide to take advantage of slightly smoother water and the waves that come off the back of these two leaders. Yeah, the opportunity there as they swap leads to gain another length or half half a length at least, maybe climb one more wave. See Plusik coming round the back of Vilga. So he's on his comfortable side. We've got two right handers now, so that's gonna happen every time the lead changes. Which isn't ideal. But Pinheiro just out of shot at the moment. There he is. It looks like he's going to make his way back to that group. Yeah, he had a, he did a, a good move there, going wide yep. and trying to catch that that wide wave, and I think it was in his favour. Now he's heading out to the left to do pretty much the same because when he gets there, he does want to be on the right hand side of that group. So all almost back to normal in the C1 as we move over to the K2. And that's further back down the field. So that's the second British boat. Yeah. So we're looking at Sklinner over and Payne. We're looking at the Hungarians, Reese and Kimetko after their disastrous first portage. And with them is so Yaza are leading Spaniards. Hungarian girls. They still are Zatko and Hudi Kudla. Hugging the bank properly there on the side, staying out of the current. Year on year, they produce a K2 that is capable of paddling away from most of the field. South Africans obviously did their job last year and took the win. But we've seen this so many times in the junior women. Reese, though, from Hungary, they're in sixth place, and it hasn't been her weekend at all. I'm sure she wanted a better race yesterday in the K1, and the K2 hasn't fallen for her either. We saw them with a boat full of water at that first portage. Whoa, the chase group is enlarging. So the Danes just trying to go around. The South Africans holding them off on the inside in the in the better water. So this Great portage Britain falling back. It's going to be critical, <laughs> I think. Italians back in contact, as are the second Hungarian. So again, Reese comes back. She did it yesterday. She's doing it today. And I think those other four boats, the last boat you want to see rejoin you is probably a Hungarian K2 at this stage. Especially if she's got that uh, racing mentality, if she did it in a single, yeah. um, she's, she's not going to let up until she crosses the line. These so. two girls are looking super comfortable, though, in the front. Almost 45 minutes into the race now. So 
They've probably covered about 10K, maybe a little more. And a five boat chase pack led by South Africa, then Denmark, Great Britain, Italy, and Hungary. It'll be interesting to see who goes on the left this time because the, the British crew are on the right, so. But the Danes also chose the right hand side, so the South Africans leading into the portage is good. However, the British crew can be, follow them. It's going to be tough for the Brits, though, if both those others go right. They're going to have to either wait for their place to get out or go right round and overtake them both while they're on the on the pontoon. But about 150 metres ahead is the yellow boat of Hungary. Be interesting to see the second Hungarian portage this time, see if it's equally uh, chaotic, if their boat is just taking on water maybe. Yeah, hopefully for them it was just one yeah. and they've sorted out their pump or that the, they've got it right and that they haven't taken on more water on this portage. But pumps are a weird phenomenon, right? They work every day in training <laughs> and then they don't work on race day. That's, that, that's how pumps, they, that's how they operate. It's a nightmare, always. They just put us under stress on race day. Yep. Yeah. These two... About 150 metres ahead. It's a comfortable lead for them. Maybe we build a K2 with bulkheads. Begs the question, Ivan, when do we start building K2s with bulkheads, Bridge? You, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on bulkheads in the K1s, the, the sealed compartments front and back, which stop the water filling in? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I think Portage we'll time, the Hungarians are taking out on the right-hand side. Under no pressure, 150-meter lead. Look at that. It's as casual as you like. And they're going to come in for the portage they're lane. They're coming into the feeding zone. They've got their juice bags in their hands already, ready to hand them in to make sure that there's no issues. Mind you, it's gone already. So into the feeding zone they come. Hungarian team is well drilled when it comes to looking after them. Super smooth. No, only one paddler reloading on juice. Okay, so and here we come, two going left. Side. So that's helped the, the British girls, um, but not the Danes. It means that the Danes are in a little bit of trouble at this takeout. Britain go, oh, and the boat goes wide. That red boat goes wide. Cool heads from the Italians. They see it to make sure there's no contact. Everybody onto that portage clean. The Hungarians are already putting in. So that lead, which was 150 meters on the water, you can see is now the entire length of the portage. And they are gone for all money. Team GB running straight through without going through the feeding zone. South Africa going through the feeding zone. Clint Cook doing the work on the feeding zone for them. Yeah. The other four boats all going through the normal part of the portage. Now let's see what happens at the put-in. Team GB leading to the put-in. It's a good, fast portage from the British women. They're putting it on the right. The South African world champions go in on the left and they get away clean. Yeah, so both these crews are going to try and see how hard they can go now um, to try and break away and make Two it Two gone at the smaller. front. This changes everything in the chase pack. GB hugging the right hand wall here in Metkovic. The South Africans going across to them. They're making a long trek up to the top there. But Hudi Kadler and Zacho have got this race by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, they've already turned and I think that they definitely have found a second win there um, coming around the corner. You can see the Argentinian girls taking out, struggling a little bit with the back paddler. That often happens on the left side with the angle. You come in too sharp. It's fairly clean portage, but quite slow from some of the girls there. The two that got away, South Africans and Great Britain, didn't do anything special. In fact, the Great Britain kind of bit of a dodgy exit but now they're two away. And I think that's two motivated boats. I think they'll they'll be quite happy. That's a solid silver and bronze there if they work together. 100%. If these two girls work hard together and they keep sharing the pulls and don't make one of them work harder, um, I think they can make a good break. And it does look like the South Africans are putting the hammer down there uh, to take the lead with the British girls on their wave. Um, so. The one big question, I guess, behind them is the Hungarians who do seem to be able to catch up even though they lose plenty. They lost a lot of distance on that first portage and they've closed the gap so they've still got potential to get back i don't think the italians can make it i think they definitely do um like you said yesterday they didn't give up but um it all depends on i think who's with them paddling going down now who's going to work hard because if you keep working hard on your own eventually you're going to burn too many matches 
So it's the Danes and the Italians chasing. The Hungarians did come out last of that group of five by a fair margin. But that doesn't seem to phase Reese at all. She just claws it all back over the next lap so that she can lose it again on the next portage. Yeah, this, this paddle down section is going to be quite interesting with the Hungarians up in the front on their own and then two sets of two crews and then the Hungarians behind them. Um, this looks motivated, though. On screen, they're, they're two motivated crews. 100%. I, th I think that they are chasing down as best they can yeah. because they know that these girls in the front are going to tire towards the end. It's natural when you're paddling by yourself. I th I reckon they're more they're thinking just hold those other crews behind them. I think they've got they currently feel like they're sat with medals, and Italy, Denmark. Well, oh no, they were the four, they were the fastest times on there on the porches. So we got Italy and Denmark together with Reese and Kimiko just after them. So these two sat in silver and bronze at present. There's definitely a good race going on, and it's good to see how hard they're padding. Yeah, they're changing. There we go. That, that so is a good good change over. I was hoping that they were going to work together, because if one crew pulls all yeah. the way down, you get a bit tired. Whereas if you share it half-half, you can make a break and pull away. I think currently working as a team, Great Britain and South Africa are thinking that now's their chance to cement this lead. It's Denmark and Italy chasing. But behind them, the Hungarians, who do seem to be able to close the gap. There's the chase pair. That's Denmark right there. With Nielsen and Co. The downside of making a run for it like these girls have is when, if you do get closed down, it's really depressing. <laughs> And you do feel like, oh no, after all that, it does take a bit of a recovery time bit once more. you've been caught up. So Pinheiro, Plusik and Vilga all, well, as we left them really, yeah, whenever we last saw P them. Pinheiro did a good job at coming back because he was yeah. riding second wave, wide wave on his own around the turn and he managed to get back. Sartori of Italy on his own there. Leaders all looking comfortable. And there was no real drama on their first portage either, was there? Apart from the whole paddle, <laughs> paddle <laughs> magic. Yeah, that was like, ta -da! <laughs> Padoof. So yeah, I don't think he'll try that again. But they, they all look very well. But just bumping the weed off the front of their boats. Yeah, so there is a little bit of weed. I think there's less than when we first arrived, um, probably with a little bit of the winds and the current, and maybe they some of it's washed down. Um, but you can see it and then try and make sure that you don't paddle your nose into it. So I'm not sure, I don't, that shot there, I'm not sure if there was something happening that we didn't see from commentary, but he gave us a shot of the rescue boat there. These three just about to come in. Just under 9k to the finish. From the start, just, well, like the half, it's a, did I miss up the titles there? Or they, eight, just under 9k to the finish, just over 9k from the start, so just over halfway now. All three sharing the lead. Yeah, the Hungarian chose the the left side to take out last time, so if he does that again, then it will make it a little bit yeah. easier on the right. Two right-handers and a left-hander. So as we go back down that field, it's Vilga, Plusik, Pinheiro, Derevensky, Aries, Quadricolo in sixth, Barbal seventh, Tamandre from Hungary in eighth, Pinkas from Czech in ninth, Sartori, Italy, ten, Melnik from Ukraine, eleven, Petschauer, Germany, twelve, Jenkin from Australia, thirteen, and Rotundu from Romania in fourteenth. That's the full list of survivors in the men's C1. So Ukraine, Italy, and Spain in shot there. 
with Ares, Quattrocolo and Derevensky. So uh, once again, uh, we will see the next four tips for his canoe. He's uh, a totally uh, of uh, his body. He's got a bit different. Yeah, you see a number of companies that you do. Junior women's K2, it's still those two crews away by about 25 meters ahead of the chase of Italy and Denmark. Hungarians don't seem to be catching up this time. They're 40 meters behind. So it's K2 race, although we haven't been seeing it, it's pretty much as we left it. There's a question for Bridget. Simultaneous to this, this question that the uh, racing is going on here in, in Metkovic, they're looking close to Gata, he's going on down, maybe Ivan will chip in This is such an opportunity for athletes to expose themselves to international competition, but some of them would have had to choose about what to prioritize. Yeah, so they definitely will choose, um, and I'll speak about that just after this. So we have a really good takeout here from Poland and Hungary. Um, Spain is uh, going to be lagging a little bit, and it, he's going to make himself work a bit harder, especially because the last portage, he also had to work super hard. Um, and I think that's the discussion which has happened right here at the front, saying there's a gap. Yeah, and those two look like they're running more comfortably as well in the front, the Polish and the Hungarian. So I think as we see them coming into the put in, they each choose one side, and we might actually see a break now if they get away. This might just simplify the race for for the podium. He, Let's see if they, they, they try and make this break stick. They're certainly not loitering and giving him a chance to get back. They're going to make him work hard to get back onto the, yeah. that bunch. It does seem like Panera was right there on the put-in, but they can definitely make a little bit of a break here and make him work hard. Um, but again, he does have some marathon riding skills, so he might pick up on that second wave again and manage to fight his way back again. This is the second group coming in now, and they're also looking like they'll stick together in that group of three with the Italian and Ukraine and Spain. So it's the second Spanish boat as well. So up to the turn. Yeah, they come into and the And he is managing, he is doing his level best to bridge back up to the front two looks like but yeah. there is this thing is stretching as soon as you come around there the, the water really throws you fast and if you can get in a few hard strokes after that pinnacle boy um, it's a one turn yeah and you one can, can see turn, that really. as, as he put in an interval after that pinnacle boy you could see and this group rope. is splintering we have the one two three the hungarians decided that he doesn't want to make his job harder um and if the Polish can stay with him, I don't think he'll be too worried. But at this stage, he's worrying only about himself and trying to put himself in the best position possible. Mihaly Plusic, who's won the award for the funkiest boat finish, definitely in, in the C1 racing of this year, but has now seized the opportunity to find some clean water at the front of the C1 race and hauling away from the pole. Yeah, Vol I think Volker's making sure that he's going to get contact again. He's coming back. He's coming back up on the left. But I think this time around for Panero, it's going to be it's too hard. He's not going to give up for sure, um, but you can see him trying to find that second wash. But it does look like the race for gold has been simplified. Bridge zooming back to the uh, Olympic Hopes Regatta, which is which is happening simultaneously. Yeah, so I think that's a really great um, platform for a lot of the youngsters. However, it did make it tough making some of them choose between the two events. I had a young boy who had to choose between the two, and he's decided on the marathon world champs. Um, but it doesn't mean that he can't do the Olympic hopes next weekend. But there's definitely a lot of um, youngers, youngsters in different age categories fighting it out on the water and seeing it in Hungary this weekend. The one, and I'm going to call it a myth and set myself up for criticism here, but the one myth which has been blasted is that you have to choose. You have to specialize between being a sprinter and uh, a marathon. I think the youngsters now, it's good to mix between. It's nice to see the Hungarian junior girls now back in the screen as they're coming back up towards the portage. Um, 
and see what gap they've maintained or if they have opened up a little bit more because th this is definitely where everybody gets so it's a well, according to the 100, 100 meters on average that they've that they've opened up and the gap between the second boats towards the chasing group of boats is about 160 and I think that's grown so it does seem a little bit from the distances that we can see is that this crew you can see now of the South Africans and the British girls are in a really good space with 160 meters between them and the next bunch and only 100 between them and the top Hungarians in the front um, they have about a a 60 meter gap to try and close. They're your Hungarian leaders, Panahudi Kadla and Panka Zatko. Oh, so it's 100 meters to the second group and then from the second group to the third group, 60 meters. Which is a net shrink of 40 or 50 meters on the lap, but it's still a cavernous lead for them. They're looking very comfortable and the body language is just speaking confidence and we've got this. They're combining well, and you can see the boats moving nicely as well with them in it. Um, so it's, it's really nice to see. But for sure, they'll start to get tired now, paddling the whole way on their own. Um, but we know that with the Hungarian crews that they, they've trained for this. So they, they, they know what to expect towards the end, and they also know how to pick it up again and find a second or third gear. It was good to see the Croatian youngsters in the stands supporting their boat. Stojakovic and Djokic. We saw Vanessa Tot getting heaps of support yesterday before that all ended in drama on the portage, but it's good to see that the, the, the Croat locals are able to get out here and cheer and whoop and make the most of this occasion of having the world champs here in their homeland. It'll be interesting to see what happens now in this portage with these Hungarian girls, because only the front girl took juice on the, the lap. That gap they're comfortable, but that gap has definitely shrunk. The GB South African chase is working. I think we saw that in the way that they were paddling. Their, their stroke rate was a lot higher going down with the current. They were using the current to their advantage. Um, so they would definitely are the two crews to be together to stay motivated to try and chase and see if they can get in re within reach. The race isn't over till it's over, so it's good that they are fighting as hard as they can and hugging the bank hard now. Um, all the crews are hugging the reeds. I'm thinking, yeah, if they're working as a pair, Great Britain and South Africa, the Great Britain crew should have dropped round to the let the South Africans, if they're leading, they should have the inside, right? Yes, 100%. I think, I, I think that... They're missing just a few seconds up that straight by yeah. having the leader be outside. When they start to get tired, I think that it becomes a little bit of a, a blur in their brains. <laughs> <laughs> and then you almost just hope that the crew on the inside hugs the bank even more. But you are 100% correct that if you're only two boats, um, you're wanting to be on the inside as well yeah just put the leader on the inside every time if your motivation is to catch up yeah. because that that's just the fastest way of doing it hungarians up and away so they had a really nice clean takeout but you can see that the british South Africans girls now going left pushing great britain forward. going right so there's some fierce fighting going on for second and third place then they're definitely not going to give up until they cross the line so i think that this portage is going to be an interesting one with the South Africans and the British. So every time the back of that British boat goes out, yeah. just hold the back in. The South Africans almost did the They're, same yeah. thing. So I think they come in at too much of an angle and they but they need to come in, the person in the front needs to come in less aggressively. That's chase group behind them is not too far behind. The front gap's about 100 metres, then to the third group is another 60 odd metres. Italians out well, Danes out well, Hungarians struggling again. Well, the they got a boat full of water again. Yeah, so they definitely Look at it, that's a lot of water in there. Maybe, I don't know, too much for paddle spray, surely that's got to be a little leak or something, I don't know. Yeah, so you away have the British and the South Africans, I think they'll both get away. The same same plan and same routine as they did on the previous portage, going up on the side, the South Africans were on the left. We've still got a significant Portage's distance right. to go. You know, we got our, as they come around this turn, I think it goes to lap five of five, so we've still got a big lap and a small lap. 
There's still time. Have they got a lean, Bridget? <laughs> that was, what you that does, <laughs> that's got the old <laughs> thing going on, hasn't it? Where the back person's out to the left and the front person's out to the right. Do you, do you know what? Sometimes some crews actually make the boat go fast even with a little <laughs> bit of a lean. So <laughs> mm. I, haven't, I haven't asked them about that, but <laughs> I could afterwards. But it could just be after the portage that you're not sitting in the seats in the right place. Yeah, you can see that the gap is actually, it's it's quite big now um, with the Hungarians in the front. Um, they, they've, they're comfortably paddling together and definitely not look like looking like they're tiring at all. Um, but as they come out of the portage, the, the British are, are pulling and the South Africans are on the wave. But it also looks like the, there is a nice gap between yeah. the first two crews and the second crew, two crews. But the Hungarian girls that struggled with the... A little bit of chatting going on there. I don't know whether that was aimed at her partner or at the South Africans, but... <laughs> Serious face there from Great Britain. In the C1, we just got a little bit of news. Isn't too significant to the result, but boat 313, Sartori of Italy, has a 15-second penalty for a minor infringement because he crossed the finish line, apparently, which is the only rule, pretty much, on the course, that you don't go over the finishing line at any time other than when you're finishing. Yeah. Yeah, we have the Hungarian leading crew in shot again, and they really are stroking it out nicely. They have a good technique, combining nicely, making that boat move. There's a nice rhythm to that, nice solid water time. It just, yeah, it's well organized, K2. At least they got our names right on the commentary list, Bridget. <laughs> well, they the spelling on mine is a little different. Oh, is it? But it's oh, still okay. Oh, we know who you are. We know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the Spanish crew taking out all on their own. That's Fernandez and Justo from Spain currently in 11th place. There's your leaders, though, as they have been for a significant amount of this race. Oh, this is interesting. Panera's found him with himself he's back on the group. Unbelievable, so really. Back to a group of three. Yeah. So he's a never die paddler, and he's definitely got some skills putting pressure back on the Hungarian and the Polish. He's anyone. the sort of paddler I really used to hate. I used to like to think that once you got rid of someone, they were gone. So write them off, get them out of the picture. He's your worst nightmare. He just keeps coming back and back and back. And hats off to him for that. That's uh, a some degree of tenacity. Okay, so with a 200 metre gap between the top three C1 men to fourth place, that's that's quite a big margin. So I think that we almost can comfortably say that these are our medalists for the C1 men's under 23 race. You're going to put your money on anyone, Bridget, out of those three? I think I'll put my money on the Hungarian. Yeah, me too. He's been quite smart throughout the whole race. But Vilga is European champion. He beat him at the Europeans earlier this year. Well, then it'll be, it'll be interesting uh, who puts the hammer down because yeah. Vilga definitely has looked super comfortable as well. Yeah. Even coming around the turn after the portage, um, he, he hasn't shown any signs of being pushed off or being dropped as soon as um, they came around the turn. And unless Pinheiro smartens up his portaging pretty rapidly, you can't catch up that much on the short lap, surely. Yeah, so if he does the same thing again on the last portage, then he will be fighting hard, but yes. but he'll still be getting the bronze. Not sure what happened there with the Moldovan. He seemed to have stopped yes. for a picnic or something yes. at, on the riverbank. But he's just come out behind um, the Spaniard areas there. So he's, I don't know if he'd yeah, just gone off course or whether he needed to do a bit of maintenance. So he's still just behind Ares. He's currently in seventh place, Barbel of Moldova. Could be cycling support on the riverbank there. So K2 Women Juniors on their final 
turn at the bottom end of this course before they come back to the final portage. Bit of emotional music at that point, obviously, and then we move on to the small lap. But looks like hungry for the win, but the real interest there is who's going to come second and third, especially bearing in mind the commentary team have probably got a bias among them, <laughs> and so it's going to get a little bit tense, a little bit tetchy, playing two against one in the commentary box, but currently I've got the headphones and Dave has so, <laughs> so it's still one against uh, one, but good luck. Pretty much one on one. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to my headphones. I'm not going for a double South African commentary <laughs> for the finish of this one. May the best crew <laughs> win. <laughs> See how close they are to the edge there. The Spaniard just tasting a few of those trees. <laughs> so you really can go super close. Yeah. It, it is deep enough. Um, it seems like when you're looking at it from here, um, I did test it out a little bit. I went up as close as I could. Yeah on the wash of somebody pulling and I never once put my paddle on anything it just feels a little bit daunting when you come in so close to the tree to or the reeds but depth wise it's 100% fine. fine and they both seem pretty relaxed about it there yeah he's actually saving a bit more energy yeah. now being on the inside away from the, the wash sitting a bit of recovery time because he must have worked hard down that downstream leg to catch he that was a big gap yeah he would have and it was amazing to actually see that he did find contact but he does have some skills in finding a wash at the back yeah. he's not just paddling wherever he feels you can see that he's choosing his line and finding a little bit of a, a second wash behind the boat so Derevensky and Quattrocolo there they're in fourth and fifth is that the Italian with the penalty no it was the other Italian had the penalty Sartori further back down the field. So yeah, the penalty is really not going to influence the result of this one. Top five, six, all looking good. We do need a third set of headphones in here. <laughs> So we'll probably see the the, the C1 through men the portage. We'll come through the portage yeah. first and then because Dave's got a window here he's pointing out stuff <laughs> that you can't see on screen but we had a little bit of drama at the tail end of the women's K2 race there as they came over the portage Could be the Swedes headed back down the course in the background behind these guys. All looking pretty relaxed coming into the portage. Two more portages to do for these guys. Only one for the junior women. So he has the, he has the interval. It's going to be interesting to see where Panera decides to go, but... Luzik is definitely intervaling into he's, this. He's gone that side both times. And you just think it hasn't worked for him. Because <laughs> he stopped so early. So there's not. Yeah, he he has to get out second. So Volga's looking comfortable as Distance well. Distance is already opening up. He's missed his boat yeah. again. So Panera He's just a little bit shabby. Yeah, he's made it a bit hard for himself there. But he's still not giving up. He's going to go for it. And there's the hair, Bridget. There yeah. is the hair. We've seen it. This is like the big reveal on the final lap. <laughs> He's been hiding that from us all the time, and now there it is. What a special moment. 
I think he's just trying to hide, hide the his little receding head. Oi, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. It's just a genetic trait. That's all. I study genetics, so there's <laughs> nothing bad about it. It's just something that is a part of your genetic. Klusik is putting in and doesn't look like he's paddling away with too much urgency at the moment. Um, Volga's definitely going to stay with him. So two away, as it has been pretty much on every lap. The Spaniard again falls behind. Ten, 10 seconds worth there. Yeah, it's uh, it's under the cosh again. Maybe he doesn't care. I don't know. You, just for the sake of tidying up that little bit of portage in, what a lot of work he'd save himself. We'll see the gap in a minute. Not too big. He's going to make it, isn't he? Or just based on the history of the last few laps, he is going to get back to them. But you wouldn't <laughs> want that on the last small lap, surely. No, I'm not so sure. Panera's paddling stroke there looked a little <laughs> bit tired. A little bit laboured. Yeah, the Italian so now is looking more confident. Quattrocolo and Derevensky, they're running through. I don't know what he's looking for. Maybe he's trying to see what the gap is and yeah. trying to decide who's doing what. But the two of them will definitely work together now. They look like they're paddling with some more urgency. There's your leader. There's a sense of urgency there too, I think. That's, that's a little bit sharper than it has been. I think Pluzik is going to try to see if he can break away now. If, if he does, then I, th I think that he's looking a little bit stronger in his paddling stroke. Yeah, very much so. The gap is, what, four lengths roughly? You, Dave's pointing it out to us through his yeah, luxury got, window. I think he's leaving Volga, Volga behind. I think that's some there's, rather, rather problem. there's some drama with the Japanese women's K2 in front of us that we can't really see. I think they've lost their rudder. But there's the state of play in the men's C1. Plusik is definitely putting the hammer down. giving it to the pole at the moment. I think he knows that if he can pull away yeah, and, and feel comfortable, then he's got that gold medal in the bag. Pressing on at the front. 26 meters, the difference. And there's your leaders back, back in the K2. Win. Final portage for these two. They've been ahead for most of this race. And they're going to stay ahead for the rest of it. They're getting a good catch at the moment. You can see they're ha having a good reach, long, long reaches. As they put the paddle in, they're hitting the water hard. So they've definitely got a good boat momentum now, combining nicely. It's a good view of the leg drive as well from there. You can see how it's all so connected. Yeah, their leg drive is also really good moving together. So you can see how their hips are moving. They're getting the boat um, charging forward. You can see it like charging through the water. Yeah. And it's, it's nice to see when a K2 combination can get that right. You do the same as me, Bridget. When you can't find the words to explain what you're doing, you did the actions for us instead, <laughs> which is useless, of course, in commentary. <laughs> but I do exactly that. Uh, that gave me a little bit. I thought, oh, that's not so bad if other people do it. So Bridget was in here giving it the whole hip action there as she was struggling for the exact words to use. And it was quite a picture. So, so here come the Hungarians. There's the chase pack. Yeah, both these crews can tidy up their portage in. And if one gets it right, one gets it wrong, it's going to be significant, I think, on this one. Yeah, I definitely think that they're both making similar mistakes. And if one of them makes one less mistake, um, it'll be in their favor. But at this stage, they are in middle positions. So all that they need to do is keep it tidy and not make any mistakes. It is exciting, though, when you start to hear that music in the background. It's like that on every is marathon it? race. Because ex <laughs> cause excitement isn't my emotion when I hear that. That's Final <laughs> countdown. <laughs> so South Africans just arranging themselves so that they're ready for the portage. Great Britain lead in, though. They'll hold that lead, I imagine, to the portage. Now they've got the inside and only a short distance to go. There's your overlap yep. that you spoke about at the beginning, Dave. Just catching up the tail enders. But the C1 has moved out nicely and he's going to have no influence over this. <laughs> I think she's just trying to take deeper breaths now. <laughs> 
They're looking super composed, but for sure they'll be getting tired now. Um, they are still juniors, but they are definitely com combining nicely with that leg movement and but the way they're Knowing moving. you've only got the short lap to go kind of puts a cap on that fatigue as well. You, mm -hmm. d you can see the end now. That's a nice shot actually coming in. So they come in nicely and they, they allow the boat to come close to the yeah. side. It's a little bit slow, but the they have the time. Back person holds the back in as well as she gets out. And that's been the mistake from the other two crews. The back person hasn't kept in contact with the boat as they've got out. So these two clear and away. The gap slightly bigger now. It's 175 meters back to the chase pair. There's the song. <laughs> they know that they've got it. <laughs> These two have 100 metres on. I was wrong that juice Great juice Britain didn't. No, she's just going to throw her juice bottle yeah. on the last board so she doesn't have it around her neck. So Hungary running well. They're getting in. The others haven't even arrived yet. If we could see the others arrive, it'd be really nice. But it's always good to see the winners away. But yeah. would be nice to see what's happening at the other end. Here we go. Both to oh, the, both same, to the side. same side. Okay, so Hold on to the boat. Okay, so the South Africans have got out a little better than the British, but doesn't mean that anything too dramatic is going to happen. It's all about the put in now. Who's running more urgently? I'd like to say that the South Africans are. Was that Batman in a black cape running down for the <laughs> for the drink stuff? That's incredible. From <laughs> Gotham City all the way to Metkovich just to rescue the drinks bag. So, yeah, giving us a bit of entertainment. So the only thing now that's going to happen is they're both going to put it on the same side. So yep. the South Africans in the front are in a better and position, uh, and the British girls are going to have to push off and work a bit harder, and they're only going to get away after. But it doesn't mean that they'll lose contact. Both going to leave together. It's yeah. who really comes down to who's got the fastest turn of speed now. Yeah, so this is going to be an exciting finish. The nice thing is, is that we know who the medalists are. Yep. They've done the hard work. So the Hungarians are coming around. They're looking super comfortable. They know what they have to do to finish. But now the urgency is definitely coming from the South Africans yep. and the British crew. I think from last year's experience, the South Africans know they can grind out this last thousand meters, don't they? Yes, they definitely can. I think they have the confidence. Um, it is all about almost like blocking out what happens towards the end yep. and finding a third or fourth gear when your everything is hurting, because yep. that is what's going to happen. They're going to come. It's going to come down to an end sprint, and it's going to be who can feel the muscle pain longer. I would say that our crew has a higher top end speed than yours. I think we were stronger at the start than, than yours. Uh, but your two girls maintain their strength so well through the race and I think probably have the edge on this at the moment. So these two just going to be smooth all the way to the finish. Untroubled. 150 meters the difference. And it looks, on, at least on the uh, digital information we've got, there's a 10 meter gap now between South Africa and Great Britain. That's, so that's still two in lengths, but no, still no, in contact. the visual says different. Yeah, so they're definitely still in contact with each other. So the last turn is going to be critical, and I think we are going to see an exciting end sprint with these two crews. Um, I think the South Africans won't let up, and then it'll see if the, if the British girls can come past the boat. Um, and if they do, then it's about then who, fair, can, yeah. who can hold off the yeah. other one. But either way, it's going to be an exciting end sprint, so I think we're in for a treat. The Hungarians have definitely put on a good show. They're still keeping their technique. They're paddling really well. Their boat's charging forward. That's lapping the Swedish crew. Now it's all down to adrenaline. Round they go. Nice, nice sharp turn. Still making it look easy. A few hundred meters to the finish, and it'll be a fun 200, few hundred meters for them. They'll have a little look across, see where the other crews are. There's n absolutely no chance of being caught. What would you do here, Bridget? Would you come in and then come back out to the middle? They, they look like they're going straight to the finish, boys. Yeah, so they're going straight to the finish, but they've got no pressure. No. 
but if if I was with another boat, I would go back up back towards up to the, the edge. portage. Yeah. And then we saw that in the C1 yesterday, right? Here we go. Everything to play for here. It looks like the South Africans have a degree of control at the moment. Yeah, so they've had they've had a really good turn there, and I think they that have. they did interval into the turn, which did put the British crew under pressure. So yeah, the Hungarians opted to take the direct route from the turn to the finish, and I think that is a mistake. I think you know, come across, get to the side. Yeah, so the South Both Africans, these crews doing that. Yeah, so now you can see the British girls are actually going more across, so they are trying to go away from the current. And you really do have to, when you're on the water, you can feel the difference. When you're looking at it from the commentary, you can't see what's happening. But you've got to really hug the bank still all the way up to the portage and then do a diagonal across. We see the South Africans have closed 30 meters on the Hungarians on, on this lap, and that's going to be partly due to that. And they're going to close it's down to yeah, another, they've closed another 10 meters now as well. Yeah, the Hungarian girls haven't had that urgency yeah. though. Um, they just need to stay composed and cross the finish line. And the gap coming down all the time between first and second. There you have our world champion, Junior K2 woman. Oh, no, we've changed Sadler. the tune though. We've gone to Rocky yeah. for the finish <laughs> out here. Across the line they come. Hats off to them. That was dominant uh, display for sure. And it'd be lovely to get back to the fight for second. It so the South African crews are ahead and they've just dropped the British girls, so they're not in contact. Uh, and it looks like the South African girls. Gap. So they yeah. are they are coming up and they put the hammer down. Sorry about the I two against one. Yeah, I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like I've been bullied slightly. <laughs> but hats off to those girls. I don't think the combined fight or the individual firepower of those two girls. That was amazing is anything like the firepower of that K2. I think that's a brilliant K2 that overperforms. It overperformed last year and it's overperformed this year. And I think that's the magic of crew boats sometimes. 100% I agree with you. And big smiles for both of these crews from South Africa and Great Britain. I don't think they can be unhappy with that. They're no. both on the podium. Tough race. But the Hungarian girls were definitely dominant.